Okay, so Linux has been known for its various distributions that cater to various needs. One of the most famous distributions is Kali Linux. That is a penetration testing oriented distribution which was built to bring about much needed corrections in its previous iteration known as Backtrack OS. Now since the release of Kali Linux, it has gone under various iterations in the form of updates while other penetration testing and security related distributions were also being developed all around the world. Hi guys, my name is Arya and welcome you all to this live session today. So in this live session, we will compare Kali to one such distribution that has come under the spotlight and that is Parrot OS. So today in this video, I will first be giving you guys a brief introduction to what exactly is Kali Linux and then I will also give a brief introduction to what Parrot OS is. Then we will be comparing Kali versus Parrot according to various parameters. So let's move ahead. Now let me give you guys a brief introduction to what Kali Linux is. So Kali Linux is a penetration testing and security focused operating system. As the name suggests, Kali has a Linux kernel at its core. Above that, the creators of Kali, Mati Aharoni and Devon Kearns also added the latest injection packages to help pen testers save some time. Kali Linux is developed according to the Debian, uh, Debian development standards and it was developed as a refined penetration testing distribution that would be served as a replacement for Backtrack OS. Currently, the development of Kali is being handled by Offensive Security, which is the organization that provides prestigious certifications like OSCP, OSCE, and OSWP. Over the years, Kali has developed its own cult following with people who would swear by the word and by the power provided by Kali. While I may not be such a staunch believer in Kali Linux, there are plenty of reasons for one to use Kali. For one, it's absolutely free. Secondly, it comes pre-installed with tons and tons of penetration testing tools and security related tools. Above that, it can be completely customized according to your needs as the code is an open source Git tree and the whole code is basically available to the public to be tweaked. Also, the kernel that runs Kali Linux comes with the latest injection packages and it also comes with GPG signed packages and repositories. Above that, Kali Linux has some true multi-language support and it was developed in an extremely secure environment. Also, Kali supports a wide range of wireless devices. Now, at this moment, Kali may seem like a very useful operating system. But as you guys might remember the great quote from Spider-Man, create power comes with heavy resource utilization. According to the official documentation of Kali, the system requirements are quite heavy. On the low end, Kali Linux needs a basic of at least 128 MB of RAM and a 2 GB hard disk space to set up a simple SSH server that will not even have the GUI of the desktop. On the higher end, if you opt to install the default GNOME desktop and the Kali Linux full meta package, you should really aim for at least around 2 gigs of RAM and around 20 GB of free hard disk space. Now besides the RAM and hard disk requirement, your computer needs to have CPU supported by at least one of the following architectures, them being AMD64, i386, and RML and ARMHF, and also ARM64. Now even though the official documentation says 2 GB of RAM is enough, I have personally faced numerous lag and stutter issues when running Kali on a virtual machine with 6 GB of allocated RAM, which in my opinion is a definite bummer. Now let's take a moment to discuss about Parrot OS. So Parrot, much like Kali, is also a Debian based distribution of Linux. When I say Debian based, it means that the code repositories adhere to the Debian development standards. Parrot OS 2 comes with its own arsenal of penetration testing and security related tools. Most of these tools are also available on Kali. Now, Parrot was first released in 2013 and was developed by a team of security experts, Linux enthusiasts, open source developers and advocates of digital rights. The team was headed by Lorenzo Faletra and Parrot is designed in a very unique way. While the operating system has everything that is needed for a security expert, it doesn't present itself to be a daunting learning experience for beginners who want to set foot into the world of ethical hacking and vulnerability analysis. Parrot OS can be very well used as a daily driver as it provides all of the necessary tools to complete day-to-day -to -day tasks. 
So who exactly is Pirate OS made for? Well, first of all, it is made for security experts and digital forensic experts. It can be also used by engineers and IT students who are enthusiastic about ethical hacking. Then Parrot OS can be also used by researchers, journalists and hacktivists. And last but not the least, Parrot OS is also meant for police officers and special security institution. Okay, so now let's take a moment to actually discuss the system requirements that one might need to run uh, Parrot OS. So the system requirements for Parrot is much more forgiving than Kali Linux. On the CPU side, you need an x86 architecture with at least uh, 700 megahertz of frequency. And architecture-wise, you need i386, AMD64, or AMD486, which is basically the legacy x86 architecture, or ARMEL and ARMHF, which are basically IoT devices like Raspberry Pi. On the side of RAM, you need at least 256 MB on an i386 architecture, 320 MB on an AMD64 architecture, and as a general documentation, 512 MB of RAM is generally recommended by the ParrotSec OS people. On the GPU side, Parrot OS is very surprising as it needs no graphic acceleration. That means you can run this without a graphic card. On the side of hard disk space, Parrot OS needs at least 16 GB of free hard disk space for its full installation. That is 4, G uh, 4 gigabytes left, uh, 4 gigabytes uh, lesser than uh, Kali Linux. And for booting options, both Kali Linux and Parrot OS have the legacy BIOS preferred. Now, comparing two operating systems when it comes to Parrot OS and Kali Linux that are both operating systems meant for similar purposes, that is penetration testing in this case, it becomes really tough. Most of the factors in such cases boil down to a matter of personal taste rather than an objective comparison. Now, before we move ahead with the comparison, let me list out a few similarities that you might have noticed between the two operating systems. So first of all, both operating systems are tuned for operating uh, penetration testing and network related tools. And both operating systems are based on Debian development standards. Both of the operating systems support 32 and 64 bit architecture and both operating systems also support cloud VPS along with IoT devices. And of course, both of them come pre-installed with their own arsenal of hacking tools. Now let's get down with the differences. The first uh, criteria of differences that we are going to discuss is hardware requirements. Now as you guys can see on the slide, I have put down the system requirements of Parrot OS on the left hand side and I have put down the system requirements of Kali Linux on the right hand side. So as you guys can see, Parrot OS and Kali Linux both need 1 GHz dual core CPU. When it comes to RAM, Parrot OS needs much lesser RAM than Kali Linux. Parrot needs 384 MB of RAM for its minimal running, uh, running time and Kali Linux needs 1 GHz of RAM on the other hand. In terms of GPU, Parrot uh, OS doesn't really need a graphic card as it has no need for graphical acceleration. Kali Linux on the other hand, if you're trying to run the GNOME desktop version, you will certainly need a graphic card. On the other hand, Parrot OS needs 16 GB of free hard disk space for its full installation uh, and Kali Linux needs 20 GB of uh, free space. So basically, Parrot OS is a much more lightweight version. So we see that Parrot OS definitely wins against Kali Linux when it comes to hardware requirements due to its lightweight nature. Not only does it require lesser RAM to function properly, but the full installation is also pretty lightweight thanks to the use of the Mate desktop environment by the developers. So basically, if you're having an older hardware configuration on your computer, Parrot OS should definitely be your choice. Now the next parameter that we're gonna compare the two OS's in is look and feel. Now this section completely boils down to personal choice. Personally, I prefer the minimalistic look that is given by Parrot OS. The interface of Parrot OS is built using the Ubuntu Mate desktop environment there are two clear sections. On top, you see a pane, which contains applications, places, systems, which is much like Kali itself. Parrot also gives some cool information about CPU temperatures along with the usage graph. And the bottom pane contains the menu manager and the workstation manager, which is a brilliant addition to the Linux system. Kali Linux, on the other hand, follows the genome desktop interface. While it still has the functionality that is offered by Parrot OS, 
it doesn't provide the same clean and refined look in my opinion. If you don't know your way around a Kali interface, it is pretty easy to actually get lost. Now the next parameter that we're going to compare them is hacking tools. Now since both these operating systems are tuned for penetration testers and ethical hackers, I think hacking tools is the most important criteria that both the operating systems are going to be compared in. So when it comes to general tools and functional features, Parrot OS takes the prize when compared to Kali Linux. Parrot OS has all the tools that are available in Kali Linux and also it adds its own tools. There are several tools that you will find on Parrot that is not found on Kali Linux. Let's take a look at a few of them. So the first one that you see is called Wi-Fi Fisher. Now Wi-Fi Fisher is a rogue access point framework for conducting red team engagements or Wi-Fi security testing. Using Wi-Fi Fisher, penetration testers can easily achieve a man in the middle position against wireless clients by performing targeted Wi-Fi association attacks. Wi-Fi Fisher can be further used to mount victim customized web phishing attacks against the connected clients in order to capture credentials or infect the victim stations with some sort of malware. Another uh, tool that is seen on Parrot and is much appreciated that is not seen on the Kali side is called Anon Surf. Now being anonymous for a hacker is the first step before hacking a system. And anonymizing a system in an ideal way is not an easy task. No one can perfectly anonymize a system and there are many tools available on the internet that say that they anonymize system. One such tool is Anon Surf. Now Anon Surf is pretty good as it uses the Tor IP tables to anonymize the whole system. Also if you guys have not already realized this, Tor also also comes uh, pre-installed on Parrot while it has to be externally installed on Kali. Now these things that you see that Wi-Fi Fisher, Tor Browser and Anon Surf, surely they can be imported and downloaded on Kali but they don't really come pre-installed and that is what counts right now. So. Since Parrot OS also is designed with development in mind, it also comes pre-installed with a bunch of useful compilers for various languages and IDEs for their uh, respective development, which is completely absent on the Kali Linux side. So for this part of hacking tools, Parrot OS definitely takes the prize. Now the next thing that we are going to compare both, the, both these operating systems is release variations. Now both operating systems come with a variety of variations, but Parrot OS has much more diversity in terms of variety. So let me just explain what I mean. So as you guys can see on the left hand side, I have listed down the release variations that are available for Parrot OS. Now aside from the full editions, which is both provided by Parrot and Kali, they also both provide pa the light editions on Parrot side and the light edition on Kali side. They are both basically the same thing where in minimalistic tools are actually pre-installed and you can install and customize the operating system according to your own needs. If you don't choose to uh, customize the operating system, you can very well use it as a very lightweight and portable operating system. So Parrot OS Lite Edition and Kali Lite Editions are two flavors of the operating system. Now this is where the differences start. Differences start. So Parrot OS Air Edition also exists. So this is an edition that is used for wireless penetration testing and wireless vulnerability testing. So basically anything wireless, Parrot OS Air Edition does it faster and does it better. Then there's also Parrot OS Studio Edition, which is used for multimedia content creation. Yes, you heard that right. Parrot OS can also make content for your social media. So if you're thinking about using Parrot OS for marketing as well as security, Parrot OS here is definitely your go-to operating system. Kali, on the other hand, aside from its light version and full edition, offers some desktop interfaces like the E17, KDE, XFCE, the Ubuntu Mate, and the LXDE. So these are basically just skins that run over Kali and basically make Kali look a little different from one another. You can check out all these different customizations on the Kali documentation. Other than that, Kali has also support for cloud and IoT devices in the form of the ARML and ARMHF releases. These releases are also available in Parrot OS, so Parrot OS doesn't stand down. So as you guys see, Parrot OS provides you a lot of diversity in the variety that it is offering. So in my opinion, Parrot OS also takes the prize in this section. 
Now the main question remains, which of these two distributions is better for beginners? Well, it is to be duly noted that both these distributions are not exactly meant for beginners. If you want to learn about Linux as an operating system, you're better off using something like Ubuntu or Deepin. This also doesn't mean that you cannot learn the basics on Parrot or Kali. On the other hand, if you are already knowing the basics of Linux and want to get your hands on an operating system to learn ethical hacking, I'd personally recommend using the Parrot Sec OS Lite Edition. This is because the Lite version comes with the bare minimum of networking tools. This means as you learn your ethical hacking concepts slowly, you could develop or install tools one by one instead of being overwhelmed with a whole bunch of them from the beginning. Not only does this allow yourself to evolve as an ethical hacker and penetration tester, but it also makes sure your fundamentals are built in a methodical manner. Now, I recommend Parrot OS over Kali for one other reason too. That is because the default user for Kali is root. This makes the environment a whole lot more aggressive and mistakes tend to be uh, punished and a whole lot more difficult to deal with. So this means that Parrot OS is generally the winner in my opinion. Okay guys, this brings us to the end of this live session. As you guys might have already realized, I prefer Parrot OS over Kali Linux for many reasons, both subjective and objective. You guys can tell me which operating system you all prefer in the comment section below. Now, if you guys are also looking for some free content about ethical hacking and cybersecurity, I have a playlist created on the Eddie Reka channel and you can definitely check that out. I have also written a ton of blogs on different fundamentals of ethical hacking and cybersecurity, so you all can go ahead and check that out too. Above that, if you guys are looking for a structured way to learn ethical hacking and cybersecurity, you all can check out the course that is actually offered by Edureka. On the Edureka side, you can check out the upcoming batches, how much the course will cost, and whatever you will run in this course. Okay guys, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Until then, goodbye, and I hope you learned something today.